I'm Andrew Sawyer, area pecan agent for Southeast Georgia. Today we're going to talk about fruit thinning pecan. And we're going to talk about that because this excess crop that we have in 2020. And we also want to tell you how to know when to fruit thin. So to start, fruit thinning is very important in pecan for our return crop. In years like 2020, when we have a large crop, this could put us in the risk of our crop falling into alternation. So how do you know in any other given year that you need to fruit thin? What you want to look at is the percentage of terminals that have fruit. Anytime we have over 70% terminals, these trees are not going to be able to fill this crop. Also, you can look at the clusters themselves. So if you have between three and four and five nuts in a cluster, we're also gonna have trouble filling out that crop. So the purpose in fruit thinning is that we essentially shake nuts off the tree right now so we can have a better quality crop this year and also better return crop for next year. In terms of timing, there's a window of only about 10 to 14 days in which fruit thinning can be done successfully. That calendar date is gonna be different from cultivar and different in location. These are Sumners, which of course are later. But the research has shown that to receive the full benefit of mechanical fruit thinning, nuts need to be removed when the ovule is 50 to 100% expanded. That is the section where my knife is touching. Generally, this is gonna be about mid-July. When the nuts remove from the tree, you've got an oval scar that's left on the shove. You want a straight lengthwise cut that exposes that ovule and liquid endosperm. The larger the nut, the earlier in the ovule expansion period then it can take place because these larger nuts are easier to shake off the tree. We are on the early side here where the two on the left are about 25 to 35% expanded and the two on the right have just started. Pecan fruit thinning is something I've always wanted to try for several years, but I never really had the, the courage or the, the know-how on how to carry this out. So today is just an excellent example. As you can see, these 25-year-old uh, Sumner trees are very heavily loaded with a crop. I figured it was high time with a heavy crop that we do something about it. But what actually inspired me to do this was in 2017, these trees made an enormous amount of pecans and which at the time I thought was just the, the greatest thing to see so many pecans on a tree. Well, as harvest season approached, I could tell the quality wasn't quite what I wanted. And also the real thought in all this is in 2018, I came back with literally 20 to 25% of the crop in 2017. So we finally returned a big crop in 2020. And like I said a few minutes ago, this was an excellent time to try this endeavor. Andrew, let's walk around here to the front and I'll show your audience what I've done to prepare for. The first thing I did was, uh, was I took some silicon grease and I greased this area right here. You can't quite see as much of it now because I've shaken several trees, but I greased this area very, very well with just grease and a rag. And this is the area between the donut pad and the flap itself. But this, uh, this protects the cambium layer of the tree and for this time of year, it's highly recommended because we have a lot of fluid and a lot of, of uh, sap inside the tree uh, versus the winter time, you don't have that. Everything is dormant and most of those plant uh, fluids are in the, in the roots. Now, as I was learning this process, I was trying to figure out how many seconds to actually shake the tree. Well, with a shaker of this size, I first started with two seconds and I just literally counted one 1,000 and two 1,000 while I was shaking and I exited the shaker and assessed the uh, situation and it looked like I had not quite, quite taken off as much. So I escalated up to three and then I did another one with four seconds. So four seconds seemed to work the best for me. But I will tell you that number is an arbitrary figure to some degree because Different shakers uh, have different amounts of thrust power and RPMs. So just take that in consideration when you're doing this uh, project. And just try one tree and do another one. Try another tree and see where you're at. And you, you yourself can find a fine line to make this situation work. Just to conclude things, I'm, I'm excited about this. If it will give me a solid crop each year, 
year in and year out. That's what I'm at. That's what I am after. So uh, I look forward to good results.